What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we've got the sixth and final round of the Keyford Sealed Vault Tour from Poland. Now, this is, of course, day one. There will be more rounds tomorrow in day two. And then there will be an Archon Vault Tour in, well, in a couple of days. It's going to be fun. For today, ladies and gentlemen, it is all about this one game. We have two players at four and one. You win, you make it to day two. You lose, you got to do some side events tomorrow waiting for the Archon Tournament, which will be kicking off on Saturday. Now, the player on the left might look slightly familiar to some of you. It is Rachel Trimble, who did in fact win the Eindhoven Vault Tour, the very first Vault Tour ever, trying to become a repeat Vault Tour champion. She is also very high up on the Vault Tour rankings, that is to say, and we don't know exactly how it's going to pan out. Out, but we know that some of the top players, judging by the Vault Tour rankings, will be getting an invite to Worlds based on that. We just don't know who they actually are. <laughs> and on the right, we've got Patrick Chabersky. Now, he's playing this Shadow Sanctum. Rachel's playing Sanctum Brobna Untamed, which means that she's one of the few players we've seen on stream today who's not going for Shadows. Okay. Most people tend to go for shadows. So, I mean, got a weird mix of decks. So we've actually got five unique houses. The only ones that aren't represented here are Logos and Mars, my two favorite houses. So cheers for that, guys. Maybe I don't even want to commentate this game anymore. Except I definitely do. Please don't leave me without you guys. I'm nothing. Also planning to get these games uploaded far more quickly than previously. I'm actually able to... um. I'm actually able to record them as I'm streaming today, which means I can upload them literally more than twice as fast. So ah, that's going to help me out a little bit. Alrighty then. So the winner of this game, straight through. Loser of this game, out. Simple as that. Oh, and we got a tiny little bit of lag coming in here which unfortunately is not on my side. So hopefully they're going to fix that sooner rather than later. So Rachel goes first and she's gone Sanctum. Is that a gatekeeper we've got coming down here? Yes, five power creature. If your opponent has seven amber or more, capture all but five of it. Obviously, you'd rather have that when your opponent had lots of amber, but beggars, choosers, etc. And we got a double Sanctum start here. So we got Hadrov's Wall coming down, Lion Beltram, and we've actually got here, you know, Mother Norfell there is actually now a six power creature. She's getting two extra power from Lion Beltram, two extra power from Hadrov's Wall. And she's got an ability whereby when you reap, you move an amber from a friendly creature to your pool. So generally, when you capture amber, your opponent destroys a creature and it goes away. Not the case here. Well, could not be the case. But straight away, Volk Gatekeeper goes and takes down Lion Baltram. Lion Baltram is gone. Does she? I mean, she must have some other Sanctum cards there, surely. There we go. Oh, Grey Rider comes down, which is going to allow her to ready and fight with the Gatekeeper. And all it really does there is break the elusive of Mother Norfell. Of course, she does have elusive, so all you can really do there is kind of break the elusive. You can't unfortunately do any more than that. Hey ho. We tried. We tried. So down comes the Grey Rider again. Double Grey Rider deck. And now, okay, Vault Keeper's gone down. Although, to be honest, it's best thing about it is the play skill. So there's a strong argument here. Get it in the discard so you can get it back and play it again. Double Grey Rider. That's kind of huge. I mean, th th that's the kind of thing you'd look at your deck and go, okay, I'll, I'll go along with that. And she's managed to clear the board, although an Exhume comes down. <laughs> and Mother Norfell just comes right back out again on the back of that Exhume. As we see an upgrade played, which I'm afraid I didn't quite catch what the upgrade was. I will... I'll let you know in a moment when we figure out what it is. 
It's not Wretched Doll, I'll tell you that. Okay, fine. I worry more about what it is and less about what it isn't. Oh, I believe that might actually be a Soul Keeper. When it's destroyed, you destroy the most powerful enemy creature. So we see a 1-2 punch coming down, stunning Mother Norfell. And then we see a couple of Amber. Oh, I love this one. So Blood Money comes down and basically makes Mother Norfell capture a couple of Amber. So now Rachel can destroy it, Mother Norfell, and then she will then get access to that Amber. Of course, Mother Norfell does allow itself to move an Amber from friendly creature to your pool. And it does not say other friendly creature. So could potentially actually take that amber and the blood money could backfire but not gone sanctum yet so it looks like rachel it, it looks like rachel's gonna get away with it looks like she's gonna be all right with this one now it is a random card no is that ran no oh oh has he got too much to protect and or step to heaven in hand did i see that right Oh, I actually did. Okay, you're starting to see, with, with these sealed decks, there is an element of randomness. Sometimes you just don't get a good enough deck. But even with sealed tournaments, you generally find that there's something where you go, okay, I get it. You look at Rachel, and she's got a couple of Grey Riders in her deck, and you're like, okay, that, that's a good start. You look at Patrick here, and we've already seen he's actually got Doorstep to Heaven and Too Much to Protect, two of the best emergency you shall not reap cards we've got. And all of a sudden, you look at this and go, yeah, I'm starting to see why these decks are so gosh darn good. So, Grey Rider Reaps. Yes, and this is, this is what you get from the Grey Rider, ladies and gentlemen. Because every time you play or fight or reap, you can ready and fight with a neighbouring creature. So now you get to go ahead and fight, and can basically do it twice, break the elusive, and destroy Mother Norfell. Treble Grey Rider! That's ridiculous! Who opens a treble Grey Rider deck in a sealed tournament? Okay, this is a good deck. To be honest, and again, free cards do not make a deck. But you can just keep going here. And that's what's so ridiculous about it. Okay, so we see a little bit of capturing coming on here. I believe that's an Obeyed the Grim. And now, but of course, now you fight with one, so you get to ready a neighboring creature. And now he destroys, and now the amber goes to Rachel, so that blood money's worked out quite nicely. Now that is finally Soul Keeper, and it does confirm that it is in fact a Maruk the Mar- no, excuse me, an Obeyed the Grim goes away. We do see a potion of invulnerability coming down, giving Rachel a bonus amber. And yeah, she's kind of jumped ahead in this game. She's got a better board position. She's got five amber. And she's got three grey rider down, which means that every turn she's getting extra stuff. You fight, you're ready one. You've, I mean, basically each of the three gives an extra activation. Remember, you can only use each creature once per turn. Well, essentially the, 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 the rule of six is going to come in here. That's ridiculous. So a spider comes down. Oh, that's actually going to be quite good. Spider's got skirmish against a flank creature. Excuse me. It's got skirmish and poison against a flank creature. So it will be able to take one of those out fairly easily. So we saw Shula come down as well there to steal an amber. And remember, both those creatures are flank creatures. And that Hadroth's wall from Patrick is giving both of them plus two power at the moment. That's helping. Be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it is very much helping. Now, I believe that's a Shao, the safeguard. Now, remember, Shao's got deploy. She's also got taunt. So, essentially, there's only one Grey Rider now that is a valid target. Now, it looks like she's using Potion of Invulnerability to make one of her, I presume, her Grey Riders invulnerable. Just trying to decide which one. 
or she could go shower the safeguard. Essentially, she's just trying to figure out exactly what she's allowed to do in terms of using the using the Grey Riders to activate, etc. It can be quite a complicated thing, because every time you use one, you get to ready and fight with a neighbouring creature. So she wants to make sure that she's using the Potion of Invulnerability to make the correct creature invulnerable, so that she can fight with that creature the maximum number of times. And then, of course, she's going to hopefully here clear the board, get rid of Spider and Shula, and then any readying she does will just lead to reaping rather than fighting. I believe that's what's going on here. <laughs> now, rule of six, remember, you get six uses per card. Not per Grey Rider as a whole, per each individual Grey Rider. So she's just, I believe what we're doing here is just figuring out exactly to make sure. I mean, when you're in a sealed tournament... You need to figure out your best deck. And that can be very difficult. The thing that Treble Grey Rider gives you, which is so gosh darn good here, is that it allows you to just keep using creatures. It allows you to essentially use more creatures than you should be able to use. Okay, so using a dice set, I be or die, I believe to then track the rule of six. So now she's getting rid of Spider. And now, presumably, we're going to reap... No, we're going to attack with Grey Rider. So now that's a two. And the Shadow Shafeguard comes up again. And then she attacks. And now it's just a reap party. So we reap with Grey Rider, and she gets an amber. But that's then going to ready a neighboring creature. So now she gets to reap with that, and she gets an amber. But now she gets to ready another neighbouring creature. And then she gets to reap with that. So she's already up to seven amber. And now she gets to ready that one. <laughs> and reap with that. <laughs> oh, she's ending the turn with eight amber. And that's what I'm talking about when I say how great... I mean, to be honest, a treble grey rider is just the... um. Just the icing on the cake. What's amazing here is Double Grey Rider. Double Grey Rider next to each other, you can essentially do what we just saw happening. Clear your opponent's board and then just go reap, 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 reap. Oh, and then down comes Doorstep to Heaven. We know he had that. We know he had too much to protect. So after all of that, Rachel's still not forging a key next turn. Doorstep to Heaven comes down. And we've actually got, you know, Gormavorn. We've got Hadrof's Wall. we got three different artifacts down from Sanctum there. Which, uh, that's going to help him there. Now, oh, we're doing it again. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. And at this stage, there's no reason why Rachel should choose any other house other than Sanctum. Because at the moment, she can just sit there and the only thing stopping her reaping till infinity is the rule of six. So she can basically just sit there and just reap over and over again until she hits the rule of six and she's fine. And again, th this is why. This is why you choose a treble grey rider deck there's no guarantee that your other decks won't be better but you know that if you can get your grey riders out you can just do this essentially every turn and it just gives you such a ridiculous advantage it's really it's hard to give up oh <laughs> but of course we knew that he also had too much to protect so when we looked at his hand a couple of turns ago we knew we had both those cards. And that's why Patrick wasn't particularly worried by all of the, the Grey Rider reaping. He's going, look, I'm going to be able to use Doorstep to Heaven. I'm going to be able to use too much to protect. And again, if we're talking about choosing your sealed decks, this is why Patrick goes for his deck. The fact that he's able then to know that he's always got Doorstep to Heaven and too much to protect, just sitting there in the background ready to use at a moment's notice, that makes a huge difference. So Shadow of Safeguard is going to take down Bad Penny. And then the Grey Rider is going to reap. <laughs> and presumably that's going to activate Shadow of Safeguard. And then Shadow the Safeguard's going to reap. 
And then we're going to reap with the Grey Rider again. And that's going to activate Shall the Safeguard, who's going to reap again. And now she's got a different rule of six going on for Shao. And now the Grey Rider is going to reap and that's going to get an Amber. And then that's going to activate the Grey Rider. What Rachel's not doing here is she's not stopping her opponent forging. To be fair, she has already forged a key. And she is very much on check. So we got a weird situation here where Rachel's going, look how much amber I'm getting. And, and Patrick's like, yeah, but look how many answers I've got. And Rachel's like, yeah, but I'm still forging keys and gaining amber. So she's got a key. She's on a amber. And unlike some of the other games we've seen on the stream today, this is not a KG back and forth getting rid of stuff on the board kind of game. This is a very strange kind of game, but Treble Grey Rider is really what is helping here. The fact that Rachel got all three of them out so fast is a huge advantage to her here, because you've seen that she's not really advanced her board state beyond that. We see it, one, well, no, say beyond, she's got Shao the Safeguard, that's the only other thing on her board. Now, we do have Tentacus here, and we do have Lash of Broken Dreams, but Lash of Broken Dreams comes into play exhausted. Patrick can't use it. Rachel forges her second key, and she's already only got one more key to go. Incidentally, Hallowed Shield is the other artifact we didn't mention on Patrick's side of the board. Choose a creature for the range of the turn. It cannot be dealt damage. Cool. But Patrick's behind here. Now, the good news is he's forced a key. He's on five amber. It's not like Rachel's just run away with this in terms of amber. Yes, she's gained a lot and forged a couple keys. But Patrick's been doing quite well on the amber front as well. Now, he's got Tentacus, which is a five power creature. So, I mean, the thing to remember, and this is what makes it even dumber here, is that the Grey Rider... You know, there's three of them. So, I mean, you could take down one of the ones on, you know, so they're not, you haven't got two next to each other anymore. You know, if this was a, if this was one of those decks that's got a lot of cheeky damage cards, you know, drop a couple of throwing stars, boom, they're all gone. But that's not Patrick's deck. You know, he has got a um, Relentless Whispers, it looks like. With, no, sorry, that's a bad penny. I'm lying to you. He's got a lot. He's, he's got a health. He's got a. He's just got a bunch of Sanctum cards. He's on a disc turn. He's played Tentacle. He, he's not. Or is he on a disc turn? That might have been last turn. He might be going Sanctum here. But what he's got to do is slow Rachel down. And the problem is, Rachel's got those three Grey Rider out. Patrick needs to get rid of them this turn, not next turn. Sure, he's got a bunch of Sanctum creatures, and he can drop the Sanctum creatures, and then next turn he can go Sanctum and get rid of the Grey Riders. But that's too slow. By next turn, Rachel's already going to have reaped for a whole bunch more Amber. And we could genuinely see this entire game being played out and won by Rachel... Just using her free Grey Rider and Shalda Safeguard. Now, I know she got a couple of cheeky Amber, bonus Amber from other cards. But make no mistake about it. So, yeah. So, straight away, she just starts off reaping for four. And that's before she started activating cards. I mean, it's hard to see how Rachel loses from here. Patrick's got five Amber, so he's not even on check at this point. Rachel's already on check, and she can just sit there reaping with these creatures over and over again. This is... You know, I don't even know half of what's in her deck. I can see she's got untamed. She's not gone untamed yet. Has she gone Brobnar? I'm trying to think back to her previous turns. I don't think she's done anything. I don't think she's even played a card for a few turns. She's just been going Sanctum.
So what's he going to do? I mean, there's basically two options for Patrick. He can try and go Shadows and Steel. But... And he can play Tentacus, but then Rachel can just go get in her Amber. And okay, she doesn't have two Grey Rider next to each other anymore. But... She can still reap a bunch here. Yeah. And Patrick just extends a hand and Rachel goes, sorry, too much Amber. And Patrick goes, yeah, you had too much Amber. Unfortunately, yeah, I mean, she had, she had plenty of options there, but she literally just went, boom. <laughs> all she needed there was just to go you know what all i'm gonna do is just sit here and rock along with my free gray rider and maybe if she didn't get the free gray rider out that fast but then again she's sitting there at 4-1 it's not like the deck doesn't have extra tricks it's that she didn't need any of the extra tricks so congratulations to rachel sits there at 5-1 and go straight into day two. Commiserations to Patrick, who does unfortunately end his day at 4-2 and miss out on a day two berth. And congratulations to Rachel for losing round one and going on a five-game win streak to make it into day two. Speaking of day two, we are going to be back tomorrow for day two. If you're on the YouTube, don't worry. The games are going to be coming thick and fast. If you're on the YouTube... Comment, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy. Check out the Patreon. Thank you very much for watching. Look after yourselves till next time. Bye.